This has been a long awaited and long overdue video and I want to apologize to so many of you guys out there who have been asking and asking and asking when am I going to do an update about our off-grid system and did the water wheel work? If you're just finding our videos for the very first time, I kind of want to fill you in on a little a bit of the backstory about our whole system and what's going on. So we built an off-grid cabin right up there and there's a spring. The spring flows down to here. We built this dam for a reservoir to hold the water. And then we built a flume box to a water wheel. The idea was that the water wheel was going to give us power to the cabin for our off-grid system where I have batteries. And I'll take you guys up there and, and show you what we have. You guys loved Jerry, by the way. And just to let you know, Jerry is doing fabulous. Uh, I told him he needs to create his own YouTube channel, <laughs> but that's not Jerry's thing. So he's, he's not interested in doing YouTube, although he loves watching the videos on our whole project build. And Jerry's a phenomenal, phenomenal craftsman. He can do anything. Jerry would like for me to tell all of you guys, thank you for all your wonderful and nice comments. But anyway, so Jerry built this. And a lot of people I know you're saying, well, that's not wagon wheels. And you're correct. These are not wagon wheels. These are from an old plow. A wagon wheel was made out of wood. These are made out of steel. This was from an old plow that was given to my mom from my grandma, these wheels were. And so he made this water wheel using those plow wheels. It's just simpler to call it wagon wheel, so that's what I did. So why did it take so long for me to do this video? Well, there was a lot of different reasons. We were traveling at the time. My family and I are full-time RV travelers. We live in an RV when we're not staying here at our cabin. During the process of us traveling, I had Jerry here still finishing up work and everything, but we were having problems with the water wheel. The last video you've seen where we were installing this, we had good water flow. But since then, we had a dry spell from July all the way through October. It was really dry here in the Ozarks. We didn't get a whole lot of rain like we typically do. And so my water level on my spring was down more. We had a lot of rain in the spring, and then from July on it just cut off. And we still had water, but just not enough to really be making this water wheel spin fast enough for our hydro generator. And that's always been the biggest question. Hey, is your water wheel working? Does it provide power for your cabin? I had a lot of comments telling me it was not going to. I had a lot of comments telling me, hey, it should work. And the answer is, no, it's not working. So currently, the pulley wheel, the, the biggest one we have, is off right now. The key fell out of it. Uh, but we had it all set up to where it would spin this, these pulleys, and then it would go to my hydro generator. So on this hydro generator, I got this from Missouri Wind and Solar. This is a PMG generator. This is a 2000 watt hydro generator and I was supposed to be able to get it to produce 24 volts of electricity if I could get it to 500 RPMs. Well we got it past 500 RPMs but it still wasn't, I don't know what was going on but it just was not giving me the voltage needed into our cabin to be charging our batteries. Now you may be asking well did you try different pulleys, did you try a different setup? No, I didn't. This was originally what we had. I had Jerry do all of the math on this to try and figure out what it would need to get us to 500 RPMs. Once we uh, ran the lines, the lines run underground all the way up to our cabin, about 220 feet, I believe. So I know based on that, we're losing a little bit of wattage there. I don't know how much. Uh, listen, when it comes to the complete off-grid stuff, I'm not super super savvy on the stuff i understand some things but I, i'm not an expert in this i'm just kind of showing you guys what my system is and and did it work or did it not work for us so in october whenever we got home from traveling we had just gotten like six inches of rain in the area like within a week and so the spring was really pumping out some good water and i thought right now is the perfect time for me to test this to see can i produce any electricity and so i opened the flume full bore the the reservoir was really holding water really well I can put a block right across that so that it even holds more water. And so when I opened it up, man, this water wheel was thumping. I mean, it was just spinning really, really fast. And so I would run up to the cabin and I'd look on the monitor to see what we were producing. 
like 50 volts was all I was getting out of it. And it, and it would jump between like 1.3 amps to like 3.4 amps. And it just kept jumping between those. It never would stay at a consistent amps as far as to be able to charge those batteries. I would leave that thing running all night long. I mean, really have that water wheel thumping, spinning fast, but still, it never would charge my batteries. So I'm gonna take you guys into my storage room, which is where my battery bank's at. Show you guys what I've got. This room's not super huge, it's like an eight by eight room. And I've only got one light bulb in here, so it's not maybe the best lighting. <laughs> so what I have is I've got five 24 volt lithium batteries from Battleborn. Being an RVer, I heard about Battleborn probably like two years ago. A lot of our RVers have been switching to lithium and Battleborn is very reputable in the RV industry. So I knew that whenever we were gonna go off grid, I knew I wanted lithium. What I love about lithium is that you can drain those babies down to zero and recharge them really quickly and they just last a lot longer. Now this baby, I need to put my cover on there, but I lost some screws so I don't have it on there right now. But this is a Victron 24 volt, 5,000 watt, inverter i have everything for 24 volt but then we've got just your main breaker here so it goes from 24 volt then to your normal you know your normal 110 and then this baby supposed to be the brains behind the whole hydro generation this is a midnight classic 200 these are my two lines that are running from the water wheel back up into here. And then I've got my main switches here to have the electricity, or if I wanted you know, to, to have the water wheel attempt to provide electricity, I switch both of these to run. Uh, flip on a breaker. It runs through this whole system, then down to the batteries. Now I got all of this from Missouri Wind and Solar. I can't remember the exact name of this package, but basically it was an all-in-one package they made this entire board with the Midnight Classic on it and sold it to me as one like that. It costs a little bit more to do it that way, but again, I'm not super savvy in all of this, and so I wanted it to just be done for me, so I pay a little bit extra to do that. Now, hindsight, you know, I, I probably could have gotten away with going with a 12-volt system instead of a 24-volt system. And I know a lot of people are like, hey, if you're going with an off-grid cabin, you need to go 24-volt or 48-volt. A 24-volt system has 50 amp hours. A 12-volt system on these batteries have 100 amp hours. So I could have gotten more life out of these batteries if I would have went with a 12-volt instead of a 24-volt. So what are we doing for power? Well. Just your trusty O generator. So this is a Predator 3500. These are from Harbor Freight. Uh, they're not very expensive. I wanna say 800 bucks, I think for this. I only have to run this thing in the, say mid morning, like maybe before lunchtime. I'll run it for a few hours, top off the batteries, and then before bed, while usually while we're cooking dinner, uh, not that we need it while we're cooking dinner, but we'll turn it on usually at that time before we go to bed. And I'll usually shut it off at 10 o'clock. So usually about a 12 hour period is what we can run off of our system. This thing really doesn't use a whole lot of fuel. I've got two five gallon gas cans here. Probably lasts me about a full week. So it does really, really well. Really happy with it uh, for right now. So what's our plans now? I've talked to a couple different people about trying to come up with a different system. A lot of people recommended whenever we did this, whenever they said it wasn't gonna work, that I should go with a, like a Pelton type or a turbine to produce electricity. I did speak with Spencer at Langston Alternative Energy. He was a big help to me. We tried to come up with some different ways of getting power to our cabin, but because of our fall, from our spring to right here and then where this reservoir is, it's not quite 20 feet. And that's what he was trying to 
or that's what everybody else was trying to tell me too. If, hey, if we can get to 20 feet of drop, then we can uh, put you in type uh, a Pelton wheel or a turbine or something to be producing the electricity that you need for your cabin. But I don't have that. So I guess my options right now really is just solar. Unless somebody else has any other options for me, let me know, I'd love to hear them. Leave them in the comments below. But solar is an option, although I've got a lot of trees around the cabin, so we'll have to put solar up on a hill, which isn't maybe but 100 yards away. Bringing electricity down here is another option. I've been talking to the electric co-op in our area, and either way, it's gonna cost us some money to do that. So that's where it stands at right now, guys. I wish this worked. I wish this would have been a, a home run for us, but it just wasn't. But I am not upset with it. I'm not upset with it at all because we still have an amazing, an amazing water wheel and reservoir, and I'm happy with it. Uh, I know it cost us probably a little bit extra money to do all this based on the assumption that it was gonna be providing electricity for us, but I'm still really happy with the fact that it, it just looks amazing. It just added so much charm and character to our property. And that's the other thing is that our cabin has become a business of sense. Whenever we were traveling, we put it up on Airbnb and had it rented all of the month of August, all of the month of September and October, three months solid at about 99% booking. So originally what was gonna turn into a, a home base for us has now turned into a business. And so my next steps, I need to be thinking about whatever we do next, how's it gonna benefit the business? Cause I don't wanna do anything that's gonna hinder what we've created here. So again, I would love to hear any recommendations that anybody has for us. Yeah, sorry it took so long to get here, but it's been a work in progress just to try and figure out how to get this to work, if it was ever gonna work. And so anytime that we were home, I was racking my brain on the phone trying to talk to anybody I could about our system to try and get to just work for us, but unfortunately it's just not going to. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys want us to show more of the off-grid and us living in the cabin, because we are going to be here living in it for the next three months, if you would like to see what it is like for a family of six to live in 700 square feet, uh, we might show that to you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and God bless.